Nazareth Speedway was one of the more uniquely shaped tracks on a NASCAR circuit. Now abandoned and left to rot with overgrown trees and weeds seeping through the pavement, it's more than likely never going to return to its former glory. In this video, I will go over the history of this track and what led to its unfortunate downfall. Let's get right into it. Located in the Lehigh Valley region of Pennsylvania, Nazareth was a trioval track with its start finish line right before the dog let up on the front stretch. It first opened in 1910 as a half mile track named Nazareth National Speedway, which began hosting auto polo races, which, as the title suggests, was polo but with automobiles. It did not start hosting large races until 1947 by the American Automobile Association. This race included 35 cars and had over 11,000 spectators on hand. The most winningest driver in that era of Nazareth was none other than Buzzy Rudiman, which, you guessed it, is the father of former NASCAR driver David Rudiman. In April 1966, it expanded to a 1.125 mile dirt track, kept the same name and featured modified races. USAC Dirt Champ cars raced there from 1968 to 1971. The winners those years included Al Unzer, Mario Andretti, Rags Carter, and Buzzy Rudiman. The track closed following those races and wouldn't open back up until 1982 when it was bought by a man by the name of Lindy Vicardi. He repurposed the track, shortened it to a one-mile dirt track, and envisioned on having it host a series of high-paying USAC and modified races there. Maintaining it turned out to be a too big of a financial task for him, so after the final modified race there in 1983, it closed once again for three years. In 1986, the entire facility was purchased by Roger Penske, and he built a new paved track on the once-proclaimed dirt track, and became a slightly under-a-mile track. It opened in 1987 as Pennsylvania International Raceway and had a bunch of elevation changes throughout it. The back stretched steep downhill while the rest of the track tracked mostly uphill. It was the first oval track to feature a warm-up lane to enter and exit the pitch, which was designed by racing legend Rick Mears. The first NASCAR race held there was the Bush Series in 1988. It was held on May 7th and was won by Rick Mast. The track would continue to host Bush Series races there until its closure. The other winners of the track included Bobby Hillen Jr., Jimmy Hensley, Chuck Bown, Todd Bodine, Robert Presley, Ricky Craven, Tim Fidoa, Randy LaJoy, Elliot Sadler, Matt Kinseth, Ron Hornaday Jr., Greg Biffle, Jason Keller, and Martin Truex Jr. Truex's win featured a last lap pass on Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the final turn. Two laps to go. Two miles, Martin Truex Jr., Bobby Hamilton Jr. Here they come to lap traffic. What a big break for Bobby Jr. to be able to catch that lap car of Mark Green on the back straightaway. Mark moved over to the outside. Bobby drove by on the inside. Did not cost him any time whatsoever. White flag comes out for Bobby Hamilton Jr. He's got some cars too wide right in front of Jeff Purvis, the one car. He's right on his bumper. Here comes Martin Truex Jr. on the outside. They're in lap traffic. Bobby Hamilton Jr. on the inside. It's a drag race down the back stretch. They come into turn number three. Bobby, Bobby Hamilton Jr. Hard. moves to the outside. Here comes Martin Truex Jr. as they come out of four. And Martin Truex Jr. will take the checkered flag at Nazareth. The Truck Series also held races here from 1996 to 2001. The winners of those races were Jack Sprague, Ron Hornaday, Greg Biffle, and Dennis Setzer. One lap from his 21st career Craftsman Truck Series victory. And he has almost a four-second lead, so he can take it very easy here on this last lap. Stacy Coffin works a little traffic as he gets underneath the 55 of Tony Roper. And Joe Rutman continues to pull away from the three truck. Jay Sauter, while well, Sauter has his hands full with Butch Miller. And here's Hornaday. Victory for Ron Hornaday. The Napa Brakes truck wins the Napa Auto Kids. In 2004, it was bought by ISC, International Speedway Corporation, and the date of the Bush Series race was replaced with Watkins Glen, another ISC owned track. The reason for its closure was basically the location. It was reported to be severely limited and reopening as a professional racing facility was highly unlikely. In 2007, the grandstands, signage, and all visible structures at the racetrack were sadly removed. The grandstands were transported and used at Watkins Glen and Michigan International Raceway. 
In 2015, the property was purchased by Raceway Properties, LLC, but in their clause, it states that racing remains banned from returning to the track due to the proximity of Pocono Raceway. The property more than likely is going to be used for commercial uses, with most recent plans being to convert sections to residential areas and to build a warehouse for a local company. It's sad to see such a unique track be lost in time and left to decay. It's undoubtedly obvious that if it was given a second chance after its closure before it got to its decimated state, that it could have hosted lower division NASCAR sanctioned races. Maybe even ARCA races could have been held there in my opinion. But for now, it will be a relic of its former glory. And we'll go into the category that we like to call, or hate to call, a forgotten track. Number four. Green flag flies and we're back to racing. Casey Kane uh, missed his pit. They said it, it's tough to uh, see your pit board signs sometimes. They're all neon and they're all so, so brightly colored that they get lost in the mix. I don't imagine him staying out front too long but with Randy LaJoy there with tires. And you see Casey Kane moving to the outside as Randy LaJoy makes his way to the inside. And earlier, Ron Hornaday had bumps. Uh, Randy LaJoy and kind of let him know, hey, I'm back here. Then the next thing you know, Ryan, uh, Ron Hornady's out front, Randy LaJoy's in the back. But then before the pits, we saw Randy LaJoy do kind of the same thing to Ron Hornaday. Those guys would not bump each other. <laughs> Come on now. What rubbing, I'm sorry, rubbing. Oh yeah, okay. Great pass by Ron Hornaday Jr. there as he gets by the number seven of Randy LaJoy. Looks like Hornaday. Uh... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's taken over a week to make this, and I'm hoping you've enjoyed it as much as I did making it. I can't describe how it feels coming back after a two-year hiatus to so much support over the last two weeks. It's just great, and I'm looking forward to giving you all more content. It's been an honor just being in this community. Until then, I'm Code Red Coda. I hope each and every one of you all have a good one.